so that would be a great place to add a sign if that could be possible. Um, there's a sign there. <laughs> Go ahead and zoom in on it. This is one of the signs that is really, really, really tiny. And I tell them that there are tiny little signs that they need to be aware of, but that's number four. Number five is where I would really love to see a sign. That's where the, the juncture of the, the four-way stop, let's say the four-way with the bridge and on the way to the falls and stuff. There's, you just, I tell them they need to go straight. Uh, if they're, if in, in any doubt, they go straight. But it would be very nice that there would be a sign there to tell them to go straight on a 10-mile loop. They, Number five is um, where it's K where the is. Lock, the lock bridge um, over the Vermilion Falls. Oh, Vermilion yeah, Falls. Yep. I, I didn't see the mark on here. My bad. No problem. It's hard to write on the map with I mean, make your numbers. Well, no, there's, <laughs> there's, there's, it, it's really neat that you can go multiple directions here, but for the 10-mile loop, you can only it, go one way. You only need to go one way, and if you make a wrong move, you're going to be off that 10-mile loop for a while. Did you know the signs are only one-sided, not double-sided? Yeah, that was the other issue yeah. is that the signs only go the way we're the way we're showing you is the only way you see the signs. Yeah. So number six, I just put number six in there because there, there's an MRT sign there. And if they're going and they're a little worried, then we could put a, a 10 mile loop sign on the MRT. If, if uh, yeah. Just add it on there. That would be awesome. Then they know they're going the right way. Okay. Number seven. That's over by Applebee's. You can zoom in on that one. That's another nice sign. Yeah. That tells them to See, turn. This right. is really nice because it's it's got a it's you know it's got the sign it's got directions it's got all kinds of things on it. That sign is is really nice. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that we've noticed is um, if you're out on that trail, what is it that you're paying attention to? Are you looking for signs or are you looking at the nature and everything else that's going on around you? Yeah. Typically, the you know the latter, right? So the signs need to be in 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 such a way that they're they're more visible, they're easy, more easily noticed. Beautiful. It's just something. I mean, they're, they're very yeah. stately. But Number eight, I would just like one there, <laughs> if I have an opinion. Okay. This is... Um, that because you've gone a long stretch, and it just tells you to keep going yeah, straight. That's in Vermilion Linear Park there. Yep. yep. Yeah. Uh, number nine is the one that will tell you to turn right to go underneath the bridge on 47 or 46, wherever the road is. Um, and it's on that side, which is great. And you go to the other side. If they miss it, they there's a four-way there, and... I've, had a, I've had a few people that would call me from over there and I was, wasn't sure where to go. Am I supposed to go under the bridge? Yeah, so that's number 10 is right past that where you should have... I, they need to make need that to right, right turn there. right there, but the sign is so far back and it's like, okay, yep. so it's just observation. Number 11, I've had some people um, worried about the fact that if you zoom into that's just before you get into the Vermilion River part, um, it has... Uh, no private trusting, property. yeah, private property, private and they weren't property. sure they were supposed to go that way. Yeah, it, um, it, it, and you know, rightfully so. You I mean you see a private property sign, you're like, whoa, whoa, did I make a wrong turn somewhere? Because there's driveways there and stuff. I, I've had yeah. a couple of, of people ask me about that one. Yeah. Um, the number twelve. That's when you get up on Pleasant Avenue, or Pleasant Drive. Sorry. The little sign on the right tells you to go to the left, but when you cross the street, it would be nice if there was another one. It, again, it's the tiniest little sign on a yep. silver post, but it's, post, a, sign. But it's a sign. Okay, okay. But, but they got to cross over that street, over the street and yeah. then go up the path on this side I've of the street. I've got another picture of that yeah, if you want. Yeah, you got it. There. Then it'd be nice to have one right there. Okay. Number 14. Um, there's a tiny little sign on that. Right there. That post. I did another one. 15 is a little bit closer. I took these about, I don't know, probably from me to the wall distance was how far and it, they look a lot further away but that's about how far I was for the pictures. Yeah, it seems that it would be intuitive that you're not going to cross the street and get on this narrow uh, sidewalk as typically when we brief them we let them know say look this path is a wide asphalt path except for a very small portion that goes through a residential neighborhood but that sidewalk which is concrete is just as wide as the normal path so if you get off of something as wide as this path you probably have left the trail. But sometimes it doesn't work. No. 16. I just thought it'd be nice to have one along that stretch, too, because there's a lot of jets off going. But that's just... So 17 is where you're supposed to turn on um, General Sieben. To cross to go over across here. Over. Yep, it's a little sign on the left. And then 18, that would just be nice. So there's a long stretch there. A lot of these people are 65 and over, and they're a little, a little afraid they're off on the wrong 
place. So another sign would be awesome. Especially in the, in the residential areas, they, it can get really confusing. Yeah. Going through the trails of the forest, it's easy. And then easy. crossing 55, that would be an awesome place that I know they're supposed to cross there. Question? The question I would pose is, you know, I see the signage. Is there a standard that you are aware of nope. for signage and color of signage? I am not. And that was why this discussion was important, is to find out what, what is allowed, what can we do, um, who governs this? Um, you know, there's there's so many questions that we don't have answers to that we need answers, and you know, we're willing to be a part of whatever the solution will be. Well, I would imagine you. I would imagine you can't have yellow or orange or things like that would match warning signs and things like that. So, uh, just a <clears throat> brief bit of information. Um, these signs were done in a hurry a few years back when we branded the 10 mile trail, when we closed the loop in Vermilion Falls Park behind the state um, shop and put that pedestrian bridge in over there. So they were done in a hurry um, and they were intended to start matching what we had branded in downtown Hastings with that wayfinding signage. So that was the intent. Um, wholeheartedly agree, the signs could be bigger Again, it was done in a hurry, and it was done in one direction, clockwise. Yes. Right? Um, and some of the challenges and choices that we made when we kind of hurriedly put these in um, is to stay out of that boulevard space between the curb and the trail is those signs will get nicked a lot, and they impede with snow plows and that kind of stuff, too, Understood. at certain times of the year. So... Um, generally can we do a lot better absolutely I'm glad that somebody else has some interest in that as well and would love to to partner with you guys somehow to be able to make this work you guys have all the feedback and that's that's what we need so feedback a little bit of expertise in your in your business but um, we can talk more about that after you guys get done here. absolutely um, do we is there any interest in continuing with the, the pictures there's a total of 30 one thirty-two commissioners, okay. Bruce. I, I, I mean, I see the point that you guys are making with the signs being, you know, hard to see, a little small, whatever the case is. Um, great documentation on that. I think I've seen enough of that. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I would, okay. I would encourage as we get down towards. 23, 24, 25. Well, 20 is a very big one. We get people call all the time that there's no sign to turn on to 4th Street okay. by the high school. Yep. And I circle it on the map and say no sign and yep. follow the asphalt trail. Follow and the trail. See, I've, I've caught a couple groups that have been standing there and I've been like driving by and I'll pull over and I'm like, let's look at you. So map. they're looking at the map. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. looking at the map. They get lost and... at the high school a lot. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which so I think there's there's ways to solve that. I'm curious what what got into the pictures around the 23, 24, 25. Okay. Is that's going to bring up another piece of information? Yeah. So 20. Uh, yeah, this one you have to make that yeah. left turn. Yeah, that one. All right. There's so a good that's sign there's there. a good yeah. sign. It's a small sign, but it's a sign. All right. So here's the cross. Zoom it up to. to oh, so that other can... one. This one. Yeah. Yeah, it's right there. Right there. And, and so the posts exist. It's a matter of making the signage visible, a little bit more visible to the to the people. Um, okay. So this is the um, the one in question. What what happens with a lot of people? They will they don't see the sign across the street, and the they turn and they end up turning yeah. and going that way instead of crossing the crossing the street. There. The sign is right. The there. sign is there, but it's. So what happened with that but sign? Isn't that a decision point right there if they want to go out to Spring Lake Park versus <coughs> go down yeah. on the levee? Yep. So, you know, that's where you need verbiage that would say this way yeah. or this way. Yeah, there's so, that's 24 inches. Inches. But yeah, there's actually a decision point that's next in uh, right at 24, which is at this point right here, there's signage. Yeah, but that trail dead ends, it dead ends. like in another. It, it, two houses right go ahead scotty all right thanks that's also a county road at that point so we need to figure out from the county how are we going to sign this that works for the city of hastings work for you guys and work for the county also 
Right. Because that's not our spot to put a sign. And that's, I, I, I understand that's hard for you guys to, to get that part of it, but it's not our property. So it's, how can we put signs in there if it's not ours? Completely understand, uh, Scott. And, and I, I, I'm, we will go to the limitations of what we're, we're allowed. And if, if it goes, you know, if it has to go beyond and go to the county, then, you know, we'll make a presentation to the county or speak to whoever we need to, you know, with your help and, and guidance, obviously, to be able to facilitate further signage. But, and there's, therein lies the, the question that I have is, how much of what we're showing you is within the boundaries of Hastings and Parks and Rec? Well, part of that problem, and, and Chris, this is a question directly for you, based on stuff that I remember talking about at Rotary with, um, Commissioner Slavic, there's stuff going on at the county level where they're going to take control over some of the trails and then they're looking at some kind of signage that they want universal throughout the trail. So it's going to be part of the, the Dakota County or whatever, the Greenway thing. So how does this all tie in with that? Like what, what's been the discussion around that with the signs for the 10 mile loop? A uh, couple of things and a couple of points. Um, the signage that we have out there is, is very specific to the 10 mile loop. So when we get to an intersection like this, it should lead the user along that 10 mile loop. We should also have other uh, signage that's out there and we will coordinate with the county. Um, and yes, right from this, this point, uh, that intersection, yeah, right there, mm -hmm. where it goes down by the Avent Horse Farm. That is county trail coming in to the east, and it is now county trail going through um, Lake Rebecca Park all the way over to uh, right now, basically to Levy Park, is uh, the Mississippi River Greenway. The Vermilion River Greenway picks up at Levy Park, circles around past your guys' your shop through C.P. Adams Park, all the way out through Vermilion Falls, through the Bower Trail, eventually out to Pleasant and General Seaven. Um, so a large portion of the 10 mile loop That's the county. will be County Greenway, which does a couple of things. It takes it off the city of Hastings infrastructure maintenance requirements. So they will do the repairs to the trails, uh, the replacements of the trails. They will also sign it with county signage but we have the opportunity to work with the county to make sure that what we want for Hastings is also on there. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Okay. But then that raises the question of who's designing them, who's setting up the color scheme, because so if the, they're not visible, they're not use, you're not useful. I think even in addition to the county signage, we can have our 10 mile loop signage. Two different things. Is there any timeline for the county action on this the mississippi river greenway is already currently signed that is signed all the way to levy park and i was curious if any of the county signs were going to show up in some of those i didn't take any of those okay. but there was really only the one that was just behind this yeah there's a few of them down that stretch of trail into levy almost into levy park that are there yeah um, but the size of the county uh, trail side is, you know, what, five by, or 10 by 15 or something like that in comparison to. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. They have some bigger signs and the county does have a pretty standard trail signage guideline. Right. So how many feet before an intersection, how big the letters have to be, how big the sign is, how the far color. off the trail the post is, those sorts of things. Yep. So is it possible to put like a Hastings specific sign on the county sign post underneath, for example? We will have to ask that question. Because, you know, the areas that, you know, that are common, you know, you still want to designate here's the 10 mile loop. It's kind of ridiculous to have double the number of posts. Yep, try to reduce the number of posts. Um, I'll tell you, the county has been very good partners with us for trail stuff, so I expect that to continue. I would hope so. <laughs> Chris, do you think that they could, um, just my thought, is spray paint on the trail? 
with an arrow? We have talked about that in the past. Um, I'm not opposed to it. I just haven't, truly haven't had the capacity to go down the road of designing that and pricing that out to see what that, that does. Yeah, you can't miss that. Right. <laughs> Commissioners, <clears throat> any other questions? Well, I'm just, I, the spray paint idea isn't a sturdy long-term. You're gonna be touching up spray paint yes. all be, the time. It'd be similar to road marking, so a different paint which road markings on bikes when they're wet, slippery. They're slippery. Nasty. Yeah. You do, I mean, that would be almost a negative towards running a business that utilizes the trail mm -hmm. to be putting paint on the trail, which could yeah. cause harm. It's interesting, but we've actually seen people draw on the sidewalks be, or on the trail before. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. With chalk. I mean, it's not paint and it's not stickers or anything like that, but we've seen people that have done that and we've noticed it in the trail before. It's very interesting. This uh, particular point right here, just uh, very quickly, is uh, it's great because if you don't know which direction you're going to go, you're going to end up with a beautiful scenic overlook. <laughs> That's the worst thing that could happen to you. Um, you know, and then you turn, then you stop, and like, oh wow, I should have gone the other way. No, this was a good choice. But a sign there that would say, you know, but again, this is not Hastings, right? This this is county. The green, right? the trail to the overlook is city. Oh. They stay within a very particular <laughs> corridor. Okay. So, so if we went across the street. Yeah. That's right. That's All right. right. Okay. Is there further discussion, commissioners? I think, uh, commissioner, if I could let, uh, let these guys finish out through their points would be great. Um, actually, that, that's, that's, the, that's the, 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 the majority of the, uh, the, the discussion. Um, I would I'd love to get a chance to visit with you later on some things that we've noticed that maybe we can help with the Parks and Rec to enhance that uh, from an internet standpoint because people do hit the Parks and Web website a lot um, and we'd love to make sure that it, it you know, matches what we're actually presenting out there right now. Uh, and then uh, just for a point of reference of cost, I did go to GDI here in town and ask for signs. I didn't know what size we could make. So I just went with a, what I saw would it be a good sign, which is a nine inch by 12 inch sign, um, four color process, so it could be any colors that we want. And I asked, I want 50 signs and I want six to 12 different versions. So in other words, we can have up to 12 versions, different signs, 50 of them, and it was only $524 to get the aluminum full color. So it's not very expensive. And like I said, we're willing to work with Parks and Rec and do what we can to help that. That's all we have. You got a question? Yeah, just one quick question on the signs. I understand that that cost is not all that much, but how about the cost of installation? I mean, we're talking, Chris is gonna have to pull people from other projects to put in posts and so on and so forth. And, and I know that you guys are willing to help out, but I mean, what are we talking if we were to estimate this all out and it's 1500 1400 you know $3,000, are you guys willing to put some of your business money back in and pay for some of the labor costs that it's actually going to cost to put these when we get to a, When we get to a point where we know where that cost is, we'd be more, you know, uh, readily available yeah, to discuss of course. that. Of course. I was willing... If, 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 they, if you told me today that I could go get these signs and put them on the trail, I would have signs on both sides of every pole that's currently existing, and I would pay for them right now. That's how important it is to our business, and I believe the visitors within this that come to this town. 80%, again, of 600 people every year are on our trails, and they're not right. from this town. Right. So that's how important it is to us. We believe in making sure that you know, we show the best to the people that visit us. So the sign cost you're, yourself, you're willing to take that money. If you were to say, okay, it's going to be this, I'll put this involved to this. What is the labor that comes out of our budget then is what you're thinking it, right it, now? It, it, this is just off the cuff. No, I understand so, that yes, completely. Absolutely. Here's, okay. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't important to, okay. to, to us. So, yeah, I, I, Shannon would probably kick me in the butt when I walk out of here, but yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it is, she, she agrees, though. She knows that right. it's important. 
As far as the labor goes, I have no idea. The, the posts that are existing, there's 13 posts, and there's some county posts that we didn't even take into consideration. So if those posts already exist and we're not having to put other posts in, it's a matter of bolting the signs on either side of each post and be it, done. Correct, Thanks. and I have no idea what that Scotty, I think we'll, we'll end that discussion. Um, I thank you on behalf of the commission and Chris and the city for coming and making this presentation. I think we need to continue this discussion and see how we can move forward to make some improvements in our signage for the benefit of everybody. Thank you. You and Thank your you wife. very much. Thanks. I appreciate you. Commissioners, if I may quick, um, uh, thank you very much. Um, it's, it's great for us to hear that, it's per particularly for the department to hear it. Um, I know it's a concern. Um, and uh, it, it's important enough to our department and, and the city to get it done. Um, so I don't have an issue with spending the money and, and using some of the labor. Um, we do have some of the supplies already. Um, there's some other coordinated efforts, but uh, I think that, that we'll be able to work together and try and make something happen fairly shortly if we can. So what I would encourage you is shoot me an email tonight, tell me what your availability is over the next couple of days, okay. and let's really sit down and, and hash through it. Fantastic. Can we meet somewhere else like the brewery? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'd just like to add, I'm really happy that you're here because I remember a couple of years ago I was complaining about the signage and like <laughs> wanting it there better, so I, I really appreciate it. And like I, about half of the loop I'm on all the time and I see about one or two of the signs. Like I know where the loop is just because I live here, but naturally I don't see those signs like there's like one or two corners that I see the signs but they're not in a place that they're obvious so definitely need upgrades there so thank you for being here thank you for your time and we'll need spares because there are folks that like to take them that's true thanks again our pleasure uh, moving on to the next item uh, CP items uh, disc golf course updates John. Let's just have John go first. Okay, well, we're going to back up and do John Hinsman next. Okay. All right. I have one. Go. Thanks. Yeah. Go ahead, John. Okay, well, thank you, Commissioners. Tonight we have a, a park dedication discussion on a plat coming up on the southeast corner of 33rd Street and Vermilion Street. This is about a, a 2.7 acre property right now. Uh, the proposal for the site is for Sweet Living to plat the site as a single lot for a 32-unit single-story assisted living facility. So this is different than what's been happening here, which is 211 apartment units. Uh, this would be a, a separate property here. So we've got the discussion here with the plat as to what we do with park dedication. Within the subdivision ordinance, we have a couple of different options in which we can consider park dedication. Physical land dedication, taking a portion of the land, making a park, payment of cash in lieu of that land dedication, combination of the both, or private open space and facilities for public use. So those are the options that we consider. So when we take a look at public land dedication, we normally look at the park and recreation plan. And looking at the park and recreation plan, this site is not designated for any sort of park development, nor is there anything really in the close proximity that is. You do have existing parks that are in close proximity with Cannon and Gretton and Cary. And considering the, the clientele that will be living here, which they will be a dependent senior individuals and those in memory care, the use of those parks are gonna be quite limited. They're really gonna be focusing uh, really internally on the site there. So this is what they're proposing to develop, which would be the building, parking coming off of 33rd Street. So looking at the dedication itself, a physical land dedication on this one would generate about 0.4 acres of land. Really nothing that's identified within a park recreation plan for that. Uh, a recommendation would be not to go with a physical park dedication here. Uh, looking at the needs of uh, the clientele here and looking at our plans for development of parks. If we took a look at cash in lieu of land, we're looking at a 
payment of about $35,200, which is $1,100 times the 32 units. So that is our recommendation moving forward that they would pay cash in lieu of land for this subdivision. Uh, the other land use applications pertaining to this will run through planning commission and council coming up in sub September and October, but wanted to, uh, to get the recommendation of the Park and Recreation Commission on park dedication at this point. So I can stand for any questions. Commissioners? Bruce? I, like he's saying, it's a senior, you know, memory care stuff. I, I just don't see that clientele doing anything as far as needing a park. And the neighbors aren't going to come through DeGarles and whatnot to a park there. It does make the most sense to just do the cash in lieu of land. So I guess I could make a motion. Ben? I'll second that motion because I agree with you. Motion's been made and seconded for the cash in lieu of. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, all commissioners say aye. 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 Nay. No nays. You, you got it, John. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay. See Adams. Not on the list. I see it here, but. Um, it is on the list, and uh, commissioners, at a preliminary stage, this is a, probably a little bit more of an update and a plan. Uh, we've been working with, uh, well, that's still the listed course pro uh, from the original construction of C.P. Adams in 1996. Uh, this gentleman's come forward in the last couple of months and uh, has been putting some pretty good sweat equity into the course and has offered a, a redesign, um, which would add three additional holes and modify a few holes on that. So when that is officially complete, um, much like the trail signage sign, I know CP Adams doesn't have adequate signage. So we wanna develop a plan for adequate signage for CP and get that installed. And we have, um, we have a dedicated volunteer group right now to help with some of that design. And uh, I think the city has some funds to be able to fund that. Um, we did just order 22 new baskets for that course. We had some dedicated funding that came in from gambling in past years that we were able to apply to that. So we've got the latest and greatest uh, targets the baskets that are coming for that course. We'll be able to turn around and sell the old ones for a third to half the price of what they are brand new. So we'll be able to refund and, and put some extra funding back into that. So it's actually pretty exciting. Uh, they are playing in October um, a state tournament out there as well. And we've got random tournaments out there on, on a lot of different weekends throughout the summer and fall. <clears throat> and even in the winter time too. So another user group that's, uh, that's come forward, willing to volunteer and help and guide uh, us in, uh, in getting that stuff running, which is great. So just wanted to really make commission aware of what's going on. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, commissioners. Anybody else have any questions? How, how many holes are out there? Do you know? Currently 18. Okay. So they're looking to add three to make it Correct. 21? Correct. Okay. There will be 21 holes available on the course. When tournaments come in, they can pick if they want to do a nine-hole tournament or an 18-hole tournament. Okay. Uh, there's not many that run a 21-hole tournament, but they can pick and choose which holes they want to use. Okay. Is there a, where are the other three holes going to go? I mean, they're going to go back towards the old roadway or what? Uh, one will be on the west side of the westernmost path. Okay. So on the kind of on the break of the hill. Yeah, the, would you come down the hill there a little There's bit? There's some little flat spots that run uh, okay. parallel with that trail. So there's one that would go in there, and there's a couple basically in some of the other green space that's available that's that's uh, not currently being used. So. Okay. And this is going to be done by when? Uh, ideally, we would have it completed by the spring. Okay. So we'll be working on some of it this fall. Some of it's being worked on right now. We've got some concrete to form up and pour and and uh, those sorts of things as well but really just kind of wanted to give an update it's pretty exciting uh, that uh, is a 
a well-known course in the state of Minnesota and across the United States, really. Um, it's hosted multiple world tournaments and pro-am tournaments, uh, and it's free. Very good. People like it. Then we'll move on to the item number five. Yeah, commissioners, uh, Conservation Minnesota sent me a notice a couple of weeks ago, and they are inviting um, Parks and Recreation commissions, commissioners, to attend their conference, um, specific to targeted at Parks and Rec commissioners. Um, and I think, a, I think a portion of that is uh, to make sure that conservation-minded topics are um, discussed and, and provided and, and you know kind of put in the, the realm and, and thought process of commissioners across the state. So that's coming up uh, October 15th. It's a 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's available virtually or in person in St. Paul. So we can forward on that information to commissioners as well. And if there's a desire to either go in person um, I think the city would be able to pay if any conference fee for that. I can't imagine there's much. Or if there's a desire to get together and host it virtually, participate that way, we should be able to find a city facility where we can, we can gather and, and do that. So I wanted to put that out there for commissioners. Just really is a, a new opportunity and update. Um, I, th I think that's great. I mean, I'd be interested to see, you know, somehow either a virtual or in person. I don't know what everybody's schedule is for that day. Is that a weekday? It's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. Oh, even better. So can you get us the information or Paige can get us the information and or get everybody the information to make sure all all of us have the opportunity to participate somehow. Yep. And we will get that out to you tomorrow. Very good. I want to bring that to your attention um, formally. And then work, uh, we'll work on it behind the scenes informally, find out who is available and wants to attend. And even if you're not able to go to the whole thing and can make it part, great. Thank you. Okay. Last on the list, updates. Updates. Uh, so we'll check off CP Adams because I kind of discussed that already. Uh, Isabel Park, that project, we had a pre-construction meeting on Monday. Uh, so we met with our contractor and consultants and uh, working through some of the final paperwork and schedules and contractors anticipating a mid-September start on that project. Um, and then prior to that, the city has some responsibility for some removals out of that park. Um, I'll add that there are pieces of the current playground, particularly slides and entrances to slides and stuff that we will be keeping. Um, for replacements in other parks if we need those. So we're gonna be doing that. There's probably not gonna be a whole lot left to that playground, so we'll probably just look to straight dispose of that thing. Um, we got some tree removals, basketball court, fencing. We have a couple of two or three days of work in there before the contractor gets in, so we'll be coordinating that with them. Um, so that'll be exciting. Uh, got a question there. Yeah. Um, is there a change in the lighting there's a couple of people that have asked me about how is there, there's going to be new lighting in that area, correct? No. No, there's not? Okay. Existing Somebody's lighting. under the impression that there was going to be additional lighting and I got asked about it. I says, I haven't seen that, but maybe I haven't followed through close enough no. on the plan. The overhead utilities that currently exist in that park uh, so the overhead power lines have to be undergrounded. And that's a condition of the DNR grant that we receive for that. So the flagpole light that's out there will remain and the rink lights will also remain in some fashion. But the, um, the overhead wires will be buried under the ground. Thank you. Any other questions on that subject? Okay. Next. Uh, the com community investment fund projects continue to roll on. Um, most recently, the building remember remembrance for reconciliation. Uh, City Council did uh, uh, kind of reserve a space for them to use for their uh, potential permanent art installation. 
and that's where the art pads and stuff are right now down below the legion uh, so that's working their charrette process should be coming up here beginning or middle of september so that's getting exciting um, still have stuff on order for the ice arena we've got stuff on order for vets uh, baseball field some of it has arrived uh, but we still have more stuff on order uh, Hastings Football Club, so the soccer group, they have been ordering uh, soccer goals. Downtown Business Association is working with the Public Works Department on holiday lighting. So all of that stuff uh, continues to roll on. So it's, it's been very good. Um, we did some interviews for a Park Keeper 2 position uh, last week. And I think internally have made a decision. Uh, can't announce anything or any sort of names or anything like that, but um, we had uh, a couple of, of really good applicants out of that um, and, and are excited about, about who we might be able to get on board here. So we should know here shortly with that. Um, the, we've talked about Is that, it. Is that the position that's replacing Jesse Vial? Correct. Okay. Um, this commission talked about it at our past two workshops and I want to continue the discussion next month I would like to have a workshop with this commission on our five slash ten year plan for park redevelopment trail redevelopment um, natural and open spaces restoration redevelopment all the parts and pieces that go along with that again talking about service level uh, talking about ideas of how we can improve when we go to a park, replace the playground equipment, what else can we do for a fairly small dollar amount that will add some interest to that park? I just ran across concrete bags, boards, permanent bag boards that you can put into parks. It's a great idea. Um, also the same sort of- Bike ramps is what you're saying. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> you gotta add some fun. Um, but also things like, uh, I'm sure you've all seen them at some point, concrete tables that have checkerboards on top or backgammon or whatever it is. There's a lot of different pieces like that that I think can go into neighborhood parks to add just a little bit. So we'll be looking at, at some of those things to be able to add to, um, add to the parks as we move forward. But I'm working on getting some pricing for those parts and pieces. <clears throat> but add a little bit of interest in a small way but yeah, I wanna, I've been doing some work. Um, I've got some price tags that I think are fairly accurate for basically what is our deferred maintenance right now um, from 2023 through 2034. And there's some big ticket items in there. Um, so I wanna continue that discussion with this group and, and see if we can get that work done here in short order. Chris, I've got one other comment is do you have anything about the red slide at the roadside park? I've received and I think commissioners okay. have oh, come across yeah, that a we'll lot. And so can you update us a little bit about where we're at and how we're going to deal with that moving forward? Uh, we have had that site officially surveyed in a 3D rendering of a slide uh, developed by a manufacturer and they're working through their process to see what it would cost to actually produce that slide. So we still intend to put a slide back there on that hillside. Very good, that's, that's the comment that's like, there's going to be a replacement side. And I said, I think so, but I have no idea where you're gonna find somebody to make it or <coughs> when that's gonna happen. I know that I will not make it long in this town if I don't put a slide back there. <laughs> I would say that's true. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Bruce, go ahead. Uh, I guess my big question is, is when are the parts that for those batting cages and whatnot at VETS going to be in? What are we looking at for that and getting the work done out there? They show up randomly is how I get them. So I don't know. Okay. What we do have is the portable mounds and we have the, um, posts and sleeves for the batting cages. Then we can start building. That's a separate conversation. <laughs> okay, um, one last thing. What is the date that we're gonna set for the workshop? 
tentatively we, set believe, down. believe it is September 15 is the second Tuesday? 13th. 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 That's kind of what I was looking at. Okay. But I just wanted to get it down to say, okay, tentatively, we're looking at the 13th. Yes. And we could update from there. And so, yep. any. The, the, wor the worst part about Tuesday nights now is uh, all the sports for the high school, Tuesday, Thursday. I'm missing a swim meet right now. Yeah. So, if, uh, if the commission best. desires a different day of the week that will work, totally fine with that. Um, we can we can work through that. Very good. I think that maybe that could be part of the discussion moving forward. Also realizing uh, there are three commissioners on this commission that terms are up at the end of the year and the public should take a look at the city webpage and accordingly, if interested, um, you know, sign up. We need folks to stand up and be a part of these commissions for our city. And with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll motion to adjourn. Motion made by Bruce, seconded. No, second. Seconded by Ben. All those in favor say aye. 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 We adjourn.